Hey guys, it's an honor to be giving you another update because I know you take this seriously. Think about the things I get to process with you. You send me words of encouragement. Uh, you especially pray for everything. So please continue doing the same. And like I said, I just love being able to take these uh, these little updates, these little insights, because uh, I know it keeps us connected and it keeps me with a support system that I and my family very much need. So thanks for that. Uh, one thing on my heart, I didn't plan to say this to you, uh, just kind of hit me the last couple hours. We just finished worship up at Soul Thirst. And we're hitting the summer months. You know, this is kind of the first week of summer for a lot of people. About half of our school districts are out, and the other half have one more week. But about half the kids are out, and families are out, and vacations are starting. And I'll tell you what, for a church plant, summer can be really kind of tough to take. Uh, so much of church planting is the momentum, new faces, new people training in discipleship, you got new people getting up, giving testimonies, and just a lot of that throughout the year is very powerful. Seeing new friends, new stuff going on. Then summer comes, and you know, a lot of people take vacation, so not as many people coming through the doors. Then a lot of it also is the early part of summer is just not when a lot of people try out a church. So it seems like the traffic in the past has kind of died down a bit. Come August, that typically changes. August is pretty exciting. People are settling in, getting ready for a new school year, and they come back to church, and they start trying church and accepting the invitations we give them to come try our church. But right now, June and July, uh, I wouldn't say the most depressing because Jesus has a point for every season, but it's definitely tough on a church plant. So please be praying for us, church plants everywhere. Uh, pray for all Christian congregations, but especially those that momentum means a whole lot and June and July are really tough on momentum. They're also very tough on finances. When people go away on vacation, especially people new to Christ and new to this journey of faith, they don't always give their offering that they've been giving. So June and July, this whole next eight to nine weeks can be very tough. So thanks for prayers. I know Jesus is in charge. I know he's got great plans for stuff to happen and transformations to happen. And it's a good time for us to relax a little bit as staff and people that have been making children's programs happen and other discipleship stuff happen. It's good to catch our breath. It's good to have break time and, you know, things to be not quite as hectic. At the same time, we hate losing momentum. So just pray Jesus is in charge of all that. I know he is, but pray we'll rest in that. We'll trust in that. And I hope you do the same also. One other thing I wanted to share today, kind of a lesson, and it's a very personal lesson, but I think it will touch you and hopefully sharpen you as well. Um, most of you know, and if you don't know, um, I put it on Twitter, I put it on Facebook, but I didn't send you personally an update yet. But I think most of you know, my grandfather, my mom's dad, had been ill for a while. And he had some cancer that was kind of under control, but they knew maybe someday it would get out of control. And that's what happened. His cancer metastasized and went to his other organs, other parts of his body. And he ended up dying last week, actually last Friday, so three or four days ago. Um, it's tough to have a loved one die, no matter what the circumstances. But in this case, um, my grandfather, he was always not necessarily opposed to religion, but he couldn't really accept specifics about religion. At least when we had conversations, he, uh, he wasn't mean about it. But like Jesus, as his you know one hope and certain savior and certain king, that was never something he really clung to, never something he really communicated. So I lost this grandfather. And the hardest part for me maybe is seeing my mom so sad. But at the same time, all the unknowns about his faith. Uh, I'll tell you a lesson I learned in this. When I put out a few tweets, a few things on Facebook, and what I said was, what do you do when a relative you love is dying, you know their time is very short, and at the same time you know they don't necessarily buy into Jesus stuff? What do you do with that? And what I put in the tweet was, well, you do what we do in every other circumstance. You've got to ultimately trust it to Jesus. Trust him with it. He cannot do wrong. Whatever ends up happening, we will celebrate sometime, someday because it will be it'll be right, it'll be holy, it will glorify him. So whatever turns out for any human, Jesus is going to do it right. And we got to trust him. Um, when I put that out, I had some people, anytime you tweet or anytime you Facebook, you know, it just gives people a little thought of what you're thinking. You can't really expand on it. So I had some good intending people, some friends I hadn't talked to in a long time. One of them actually reached out to me and said, you know what you do? You go to his bedside, you tell him the gospel. Then you tell him the gospel again. Then you stay by his bedside, and the next hour you tell him the gospel. Then the next day you tell him the gospel. Then as long as he lives, you keep telling him the gospel. Just keep saying it to him. Say it over and over. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Keep, keep talking to him. Keep talking to him. I heard that, and I'll be honest, I, I don't agree at all. 
I don't. My, my, my grandfather and I, we've had a lot of good conversations about faith. He knows the gospel. I mean, I've been able to articulate to him who I believe and who, who Jesus has shown himself in my life and in the life of many of my friends and other family members. I mean, this has been articulated to him. It wasn't something new for him. And I really don't believe on his deathbed was a time to just keep throwing it at him. I'm not saying we don't remind him we believe he's loved and we believe a Savior made him. I'm not saying you don't go with the promptings of the Spirit, but I don't think the answer is you got to keep giving it, keep giving it, keep putting it, keep saying it, make him hear it, make him hear it. You know what I think that is? I think that's us trying to be strong in a time where we're weak. We can't do anything about anyone's eternity. You, you can't do anything about my eternity. You really can't. I can't do anything about my children's eternity. I mean, ultimately, I can't. Can't do anything about my wife's eternity. Anyone in this world's eternity. Those are things we can't ultimately do anything. Does Jesus graft us into the process? Yes. Does Jesus show up in our lives and change our hearts and lives and show us he's Savior so we can witness to that and testify and share it with others as he gives opportunity? Yes. But ultimately, nothing we do get someone out of hell and into heaven. Nothing we do takes someone from disbelief to belief. That's the work of Jesus. That's the work of this incredible Father, Son, Holy Spirit that is over everything and sovereign. That's the word I want to use. Sovereign. Knowing what's right. Knowing what's going to happen. Going to cause things to happen the right way. Jesus, the Father, the Spirit, they are sovereign. They got this. I can look at you very seriously right now. And I've said this to my mom. I'd say it to anybody. Jesus has it figured out between him and my grandfather. Jesus has got it. I don't know how it went down. It would be much better. I would love it if he'd professed Christ openly and said it and celebrated it. That'd be so much easier. If you're a believer in Christ, profess it with your mouth, with your lips. That helps. Others know it's going to be good. We can trust in that if anything ever happened to you. But if you don't hear that from someone, if they don't cling to Christ, if they don't profess, it's not hopeless. You just got to trust in Jesus. He'll do the right thing. He's got to cause his gospel to be born in a heart. He's got to change a heart. We know he does that a lot on deathbeds. You know, there are many human phrases, like there's no atheist in a foxhole. You know, many human phrases like that, because we see God do some powerful stuff when we really come to grips with our weakness, and a deathbed is weakness. But at the same time, I don't know how it went down, but I know beating people with the gospel is not the answer, not even on a deathbed. And I know trusting in Jesus, fully trusting Him with eternity, trusting Him with hearts, trusting Him with lives, trusting Him with circumstances, that's what it's all about. That's what his spirit is causing. So me now, it's a good gut check for me. As I go about a life of mission, as I go about a life of, you know, striving to disciple people and being discipled myself, got to trust Jesus in the process. Not here to make anyone believe anything. I'm not here to, to will them into heaven or to will them into belief. I can't. I'm a piece of dust on this planet that's a little speck of dust in this universe that God created. God's got this thing figured out. I can rest in Him. I can rest and have trust because His Spirit has caused me, caused us to have trust in Jesus has got this. Yes, He will use us. Yes, we don't want to grieve the promptings. When He prompts us to be part of some words, some witness, some care, Jesus help us go through with that. Help us be part of it. But at the same time, in the weakest of moments, the death of a loved one and we don't know where they stand with you. You know, kind of been against that their whole life. In that weak moment, I celebrate and I trust in you, Jesus. Give it all to you. Every other moment, with, with Soul Thirst Church, with these other missions, with these Jesus Adventure communities we're launching, with the foreign missions in Africa, with the homeless stuff we're doing downtown, I mean, all of it. We're not doing anything. Jesus, you're up to it. We trust you with it. Help us be faithful, but help us trust you got it. May you take that into your workplace. May you take that into your own home. May you take that into the church you're a part of. May you take that certainly into any mission endeavor. Jesus, this is you. You got it. We trust it to you, and you will never do it wrong. I'm reminded of that this week. Thanks for your prayers for my family, uh, especially my mom. That's the hardest part, like I said, seeing her sad about her father. Now both her parents have passed away, so she lost her, her, her dad. She had already lost her mom. That hurts my heart a ton, as you can imagine, so please be praying for that. And also, I'm going to travel out to Florida. Uh, not a funeral, but they're having a memorial celebration, a party. I'll get a chance to see all the relatives I don't see very often, so pray for that also. So thanks for those prayers. Hit me back with anything. Um, have a good week. Have a good summer, and I'll promise to get you another update soon. God bless. Jesus has got this. I believe it with everything in me. By His Spirit, He's got you. Have a great week. Bye.